Here we'll be looking at the futility that is resistance, how we define it and the unit that we measure it in. In addition, we'll be introducing a really important equation um, that will come in use uh, very much often uh, when we're studying circuits. Uh, so to start off by defining resistance, resistance is the opposition to flow of electrical current through a component. So if we've got some electri uh, uh, an electrical component in our circuit and we have current flowing through this circuit, then the resistance of that com component is how much it opposes the flowing of that current through it. Um, so we might expect that uh, in that case we would measure it in terms of maybe how much energy that resistor takes out per coulomb of charge that passes through it, which would give us the same definition as voltage. In fact, uh, if we have a look at the unit, we get something quite different. So resistance is measured in ohms, and one ohm is one volt per ampere. So one ohm is one volt per ampere. So not quite what we might have expected. Um, so to try and get an understanding of this, we can have a look at an analogy. Uh, so I'll, I'll run through two analogies for you. Uh, the first one is going to be, let's say, we're on a bike, and we're traveling forwards. As we travel forwards, we experience some resistive wind drag, so some air resistance due to the wind that passes over us because we're traveling forwards. And so this traveling forwards we can think of as a current, and this drag we can think of as a voltage, or specifically a potential difference. Uh, and the EMF would be us pedalling down here. So as we travel forwards, as the current flows, each coulomb of charge within that current has some energy taken away from it. As we're travelling forwards, this air resistance zaps energy away from us. As we try and travel faster, or try and increase the current, the drag that we experience also increases. So the faster we try and flow, the more uh, energy gets taken out per coulomb. And so that's what we're seeing with resistance. We've got uh, that the ohm is volt per uh, amp. And so we're saying uh, we've got, as we try and travel faster for a given amount of resistance, so we can think of it as a given amount given aerodynamics, particular aerodynamics on this bike, as we try and travel faster, we get more energy zapped away from us. Another common analogy that we see around this is to do with water. So if I switch to something, well, let, let's, let's sketch out a pipe first and then I'll move to something watercolored. Uh, so let's imagine we've got some water tank here, and then coming out of the bottom of the water tank we've got a little hose. And in here we've stuck a whole load of water. So we've got some water level inside this tank. So we have water flowing out of this hose. We've got this open and so this flow of water we call the current. This is what we make analogous to the current. And how fast that's going to flow is going to depend on two things. One is how thick or thin the pipe is. So this hose pipe is our resistance. And this head of water, how high this head of water is, how much pressure we have trying to force the water through this, is our voltage. So if we've got more energy per coulomb that we're forcing through this resistance, then we will get a higher current. Or equivalently, if we want a higher current to flow, then we're going to have to put in more energy per coulomb. This pipe is going to zap out more energy per coulomb that flows through it if we're trying to flow through it at a higher rate. And so this leads us on to 
Ohm's law, which is what links these. Uh, so Ohm's law states that the current through a conductor is proportional to the potential difference across it, provided physical conditions such as temperatures remain constant. Uh, and this leads us to an equation which looks like this. So this here is the voltage, which will be measured in volts. Here we have current measured in amps, and here we have resistance measured in ohms. So if we have some resistor and we want to move some current, some flow of charge through this resistor, then it will take, uh, we have to apply this many volts across that resistor. We're going to have to give at least this many coulombs of charge, uh, uh, this many joules per coulomb of charge uh, to the current that's flow to the charge that's flowing through this resistor in order to do so. Or similarly, uh, we can say that for this current, when this current flows through this resistor, this many joules per coulomb of charge uh, will be taken away as it flows through the resistor. And it's worth noting that it is under given uh, constant physical conditions. So as something heats up, uh, the resistance will tend to change. And so because that changes this value, uh, that means this is no longer constant and this whole equation no longer applies. So as long as we've got uh, given physical conditions, we can use this. Uh, in a later video, we'll get on to looking at examples of uh, what happens when these physical conditions change, in particular when we look at a filament lamp, as we increase the current passing through that, the filament heats up, and so we see something slightly different going on, which we will be able to explore. Uh, so here's an example of how we would use this. So we've got when a current of 150 milliamps passes through a component, each coulomb of charge loses 5 joules of energy to heat, determine the resistance of the component. So we know that V is equal to IR. So if we want the resistance, then that means resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. Now we know the current, that's 150 milliamps. And so now we just need to work out what the voltage is. So we know from a previous video that the work done by some voltage is given by that voltage times the charge that that acts on, which gives us voltage is work done per charge. And we're told that each coulomb of charge, so every one coulomb, is getting five joules of energy taken away from it. So we've got a potential difference with five joules per coulomb, uh, which means five volts. So this five volts can now come up into here. And so now all that we need to do is work out this equation once we've substituted in the value. So we've got 5 volts divided by 150 milliamps, which is 0.15 amps. And that gives us a value of 33 and a third ohms. So the resistance of this resistor, if we have this potential difference across this resistor, so if we're taking out 5 joules per coulomb of charge that passes through the resistor, when we're trying to force this current through it, that means that this resistor has 33 and a third ohms of resistance. So that is how we define resistance, that is what it does to a circuit, and this here is Ohm's law, and this is a lovely example for you of how we use that.